All right, next up, we're going to do the running back here, which is kind of like the next Austin Eckler, which is kind of cheating here. But Austin Eckler, just to me, is a good example of a guy who undrafted. Like, he barely got a, people to come to his pro day, basically. And then became... So, basically, if there's a running back who... I'm going to go with, let's say, three or four years from now, I'm t- I come from the future, and I'm like, that guy is the number one pick in fantasy football mm. this year. And, you, like, and it's in this draft, and he's not even a, a, a guy who got picked in the first few rounds. DK... Who do you think I'm talking about? This is that's a tough one when you say the number one pick in fantasy. I think so. The first guy that I thought of as a day three potential to have really high volume in the NFL is Audrick Estime out of Notre Dame, who is a big, strong, physically strapping young man. Type of running back is going to run run people over. He really reminds me of Chris Carson. Um, that's not like my comp, even though I am a Seahawks homer. Like this is the comp that a lot of people are using. He he really does kind of look like Chris Carson out there. Um, he ran really poorly at the combine four, seven, one or something like that, but you don't see that on tape. He has a ton of explosive plays. He hits a ton of home runs, um, like 50 yard rushes. And he's, uh, got really light feet for his size. He's only 20 years old. He didn't really get utilized in the passing game a whole lot, but he ended up catching all of his targets last year, I believe. So, you know, he has, I think the potential to do a little bit more in the passing game than he did in college. And so a guy like SMA who is young, faster than he tested certainly and maybe this is like a notre dame thing they just don't prepare these guys to run very well kyron williams ran really slow and that was part of the reason he fell too um, the only running the only guys from notre dame who run well are bad like chase claypool <laughs> amazing like, uh, like miles boykin what a run Terrible. miles boykin all these yeah, other, yeah. right kyle hamilton comes out uh, 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 uh kyron williams comes out i'll just estimate none of these guys can run all good if you can't run a 40 out of notre dame you did it right you yeah. tell me every notre dame guy just they're all bad at running 40 yard dashes and the only ones who can run are suck at football but the guys who are good at football at notre dame that's, can't run a they're too I mean, busy winning they're too I busy like four playing total examples they can't even yeah, get 11 I, guys sure. in the field at goal line uh, this is the opposite of Penn State, who has the freakish, yeah. the, the most freakish athletes you've ever seen in your life, but marginally good at football. Can't catch uh, the football. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, I, I like estimate. I think, you know, he's probably a fourth round pick, but I think if he could find a spot where he's getting early down work, he could eventually be a Chris Carson type player or maybe even like a sort of a Leonard Fournette type player where you're dumping it off to him a bunch, depending on the quarterback, of course. But I think he could be that type of player. I like that. I have a couple yeah. others, but let, let's have Ben uh, go too. Yeah, so the the two the two that I really like, I like Marshall Lloyd out of USC, mm-hmm. who might be like make it round three. Like he might not end up being your 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 third your your day three guy. Uh, I like to say like I have no idea why Marshawn Lloyd is like not liked more by the league, as if I didn't see like historic fumble numbers right. at USC. That's the bad thing. So let's just do that. Oh, I have no idea why the league doesn't like Marshawn Lloyd as much as I do. I lose the ball a lot. Is bad ball security issues. I uh, hopefully like let's just let's wave that away. Be like oh, variance, and then like pretend that you know be fine. Like, numbers are crazy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So he fixes that in the league. Um, this is a this guy. This is a, a bowling ball back. He's five eight two twenty. Runs a four four six. This is a. a a thick, dense young man moving real fast. <laughs> he is tough to bring down. He breaks tackles, man. Marshawn Lloyd, you watched some Caleb Williams from the USC film. He is ripping off explosives in the running game. Now, part of the cost, all right, is that he likes to screw around behind the line of scrimmage a little bit, and he'll bounce, and he'll head fake, and he'll jet this way, and you're like, Lloyd, just go please pick up five yards. It gets blocked for you. I think some of that is his play style. I think some of that is the way that that running game works, they're so often blocking with just five. They're on RPOs. And so he just like, like if you put him in a more traditional NFL style game, I think like things will be more clear. He'll, he'll, he'll run more vertically. Uh, so you have some play style concerns, but he's unbelievable on the hoof. And then he can catch the ball. Yeah, it, This is a big back who catches it. Fantasy first overall pick. You better PPR, half PPR, whatever it is that you guys argue about. Uh, you got to be able to catch the football. Half, half and, and PPR. What? Yeah, half, oh, obviously half. Um, yeah. You got to be able to catch the football. He's got soft hands. He's got hands outside of his frame. He run vertical routes for them and catch it down the field. Like this is a real receiving profile. Uh, Lloyd re- reminds me a lot of like a like Khalil Herbert, right? Where it's just like this is a a dense player who breaks tackles and can be uh, effective uh, uh, out, outside of the numbers. Right? He can catch pass for you. If, so I like Lloyd quite a bit. Yeah, I was going to Lloyd fan I, too, right? Do you catch? I am. I am. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, if you squint really hard, I think you can see shades of Josh Jacobs with this guy. Um, yeah. I think he, he he's got really quick feet and like like so like I said he's good at catching the football and these are very important things in, in much to Hyphus's chagrin a lot of people play PPR and half PPR and those catches count for points and so that's important I wanted to talk about 
another guy that could be good in the PPR, half PPR world. And that's Bucky Irving out of Oregon, who mm-hmm. he he's small and he ran slow, which generally speaking in the history nice. of the world is <laughs> good, not a good, good thing when you're playing football. Tell me um, more. But, but he is we're, very good. We're pro slow guys on this show. If they have a bad <laughs> yeah. 40 time, we are in. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will say when you watch the tape, I never once thought he looked slow. Maybe, maybe like as a home run hitter, he gets caught every once in a while from behind, but he's really quick, really elusive. Well, I, I, I short area. have to clarify right now. Slow, but doesn't look slow. Actually, he's quick. What does that mean? Correct. Quick is different than fast. Slow and quick are not opposites. All right, let's, let's just do this right now. Oh, wait, are I you agree. really asking? I, the, you don't know the difference between quick and fast? Come on. Well, quick I, is like acceleration. lateral quick. quickness. Yes. You quick, know, like like what we say, Tyreek Kill is straight Change direction, fast, Tyre- quick burst. Yeah. Well, I probably wouldn't also, use win a game Kill, tag. But yeah. Well, no, 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 extremely fast so, at both. <laughs> but yeah. that, no, no, but that is, are you saying, when he quick, do you mean like he'd win a game of tag, you couldn't pin him down? Yes. Or he could accelerate to his top speed fast, right. but his top speed is not that fast. Right. He's that, not a, he, he doesn't have long speed, if, if that helps. He doesn't, he's not the type of guy who's going to run away from a bunch of defenders at, if he gets open necessarily. I don't think he's slow in that sense, but uh, he's more quick and elusive and, and, you know, has the short area burst to make guys miss. He's got really good contact balance. He, he breaks tackles. His production is incredible. Um, I think he's, there is a world in which he is sort of on the, James White or like Dion Lewis type spectrum as a player where you find him a role as a pass catcher on a team that especially with a quarterback that likes to dump the ball off and he could be really productive Um, but I don't think he's he's not going to be I don't think he'll be a day two pick just because teams are going to see he's small and slow and be like well we can get him later Mm -hmm. I love that too because Bucky Irving's such a better name than James White it's a good (laughs) rebrand it (laughs) is a great name he's good If if you watch him it's like wow this guy's really exciting and then Unfortunately, he just, you know, did not test well. And so everyone's kind of off him at this point. When the NFL, like, lets us know which which player every week ran the fastest in a game, Raheem Mostert, 22.1 miles an hour, is is the tracking device in the ball or in their pads? Pads. Pads, I believe, pads. yeah. It's but those, those stats are for ball carriers, so it's almost always just a guy who's ripping an 80-yard touchdown. Explain to me why that is not the way in which we judge college player speed rather than have them come to the combine without pads and run why don't we just say who was the fastest guy on the field running in the game well we do so, it's part of the process now and it's becoming a bigger part of the process it should be the only important. process it's important to teams but the problem is craig there's not a long enough track record of of data that's part of the big part but why of the do we need like it combine why but they do we also, need a track record who, who well, the ran short the answer answer is, on the field to the sh- compare to but, the but we know how answer. we know what is mm-hmm. fast and what is slow? We know so, that 22 so miles an hour is fast and 19 is not. Two yeah. things, Craig. I would say, number one, I don't know if you've noticed, but the NCAA is not great at, uh, I don't know, enforcing uh, uniform rules in college football right now. And just the overall, like, comprehensive rules is number one. Two, they kind of are doing it. I think a lot of teams, like I think what the Rams do, what teams do actually, eventually they will have this player tracking everywhere. But what they have started doing is using machine learning to actually just calculate how fast guys are going by just having like AI watch yeah. the game, college football team. <laughs> and wild. they're just figuring out, yeah. oh, this guy is basically, they just are use, watching the film and the computer can figure out. So oh, the, AI, this guy, the AI is essentially like speed gunning them. Yes. yes. But in general, the smart teams are, are using and caring about on field miles per hour remarkably more than average and more certainly than they did in the past where they more so cared about the 40 yard dash. It just feels like the 40 yard dash is like the equivalent of like putting your hand on someone's forehead to see if they feel sick. It's like, <laughs> we need to move yeah. on. There, yeah. there are other ways. No, to I, I, so anyway, the the answer is most teams probably have like, but I, I, I honestly, it's a perfect example. Puka Nakua is a guy that I think was identified as mm-hmm. having high game speed that didn't have a good 40, but they're like, who cares? Because we look at all these times he was fast in games. So, can you I mention two more really deep cut running backs before we move on? Please. One of them, I think, is, is my second one as well, DK. Yeah, so these are two guys that I, I've been doing. I'm a sicko, so I've been doing some dynasty rookie drafts already, and these are players that people are pretty excited about. In like I have to say, I love round. and respect you drafting guys before they are on an NFL <laughs> Oh, it's terrifying. It's, it's terrifying. Um because then you could have, you know, you could do like it's also the, the right way to do it. That's honorable. I, it, wait, it, it is the honorable the teams, way. Yeah. Dishonorable. It's, it's more pure. The spirit. Yeah. yeah, silly. This is for the love of the game. Anyway, so these two guys are both very old, very fast, former wide receivers turned running backs, and that's Tyrone Tracy 
and Blake Watson out of Mets, Memphis. Tyron Tracy out of Purdue. Mm. Um, and both guys are a little bit raw, I would say, but both have really good athleticism. Um, and obviously, as former receivers, you like kind of the idea that they could be big time pass catchers in the NFL. It's kind of the Antonio Gibson, uh, you know, archetype or whatever of, of running back coming into the league. I thought you were going to bring up Dylan Lauby, the New Hampshire kid. He's I love a, he's Dylan another Lauby. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Dylan Lauby. That's, that's, the, that's the true Austin Eckler in this class. Dude, he's it's just yeah. a, a little bowling ball who can catch. Let's he's, do it. He Dylan Lauby, so he's white, so he's going to get compared to Danny Woodhead. And also he went to New Hampshire, which is like the whitest college you could possibly <laughs> It um, might be, yeah. but I, I call him to Jalen Warren. That's how I think you're. Yeah, no, that that's soup. Yeah, I I think that's true because I, I he probably is not going to be an in between tackles guy. But Dylan Lobby is a really good receiver, and he also is a really good blocker. So I actually weirdly think he could, even though he's probably going to be like a fifth round pick. I feel like Dylan Lobby could actually be playing as a rookie more than yeah. some of these guys. He had just like, yeah, he had like 200 receiving yards in a game. At one yeah, year. Lobby, and he can uh, block. Uh, Lauby, 100% of this class gives me Warren vibes, or he's just going to be behind like some like early drafted, highly valued running back and just slowly chip and chip and chip and chip away into his, into his reps. Good player.